Francisco Alvarez is finally living up to the hype. Can Kyle Hendricks continue to turn back the clock and keep pitching great? Join us for a gripping episode where we provide you with the best must-add players heading into Week 11 on this action-packed episode of Locked On Fantasy Baseball. You are Locked On Fantasy Baseball, your daily fantasy baseball podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, fantasy baseball fanatics, and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Baseball Podcast, brought to you by the Locked On Sports Network, your team every day. As always, we're your number one source of fantasy baseball knowledge, and thank you for making us your first listen each and every day. I'm your host, Dominic Martino, here as always with my brother, my co-host, my better half, my partner in crime, Matthew Wane. Yo, yo, let's have a good one. Yes, sir. You can find us on all social media platforms and podcasting apps. And if you're listening on one like Apple or Spotify that allows five-star ratings and reviews, we would truly appreciate it if you could do that for us. Also, if you're watching on YouTube and you haven't already, hit that little bell below. It subscribes you to the channel every time we drop a new episode. And once again, if you're watching on YouTube, please be sure to like and comment because we love to talk fantasy baseball with you. Locked on fantasy baseball fans, we got a fully loaded episode for you today. Let us be your team secret weapon, as always, while we provide you with the best must-add players heading into Week 11. And boy, oh boy, is there a bunch of them. But Matt, who do we got up first today, brother? All right, guys. So we're going to talk about a catcher. Usually we don't open up with it, but catcher's been putrid, and this is a good name to talk about. We've been talking about him on and off for the last, like, you know, I mean, let's just be straight. Since the season started, whether or not he should be on our team since he got the call, and that's Francisco Alvarez. Alvarez has up and down. It, it, you can never predict when he's going to be hot, when he's going to be cold. But, I mean, quite honestly, I don't think there's going to be a balance this year. But right now, you're going to ride the rave, uh, the wave with Francisco Alvarez because last week he put up a whopping week because he had five runs, four bombs, six ribs, batting about 238. Now, I mean, the average isn't impressive, but the counting stats are phenomenal. The four bombs could almost win you a week you know, with your regular team's production uh, uh, production, and then you just put Francisco Alvarez, which catchers really don't do any kind of production, honestly, outside of like maybe one home run and a couple ribs and a couple runs. And you pray that they cannot destroy your batting average. Well, Francisco Alvarez did the exact exact opposite. He put up the the bombs, he put up the ribs, he put up the runs and then destroyed your batting average. Like it is what it is, but like this kind of production, you need to pick him up and just see where it rolls, right? Because Quite honestly, like we all know, based off his minor league stats, like he has the potential. I mean, in the minors, my guy hit in 2022 in 411 at bats, 74 runs. He hit 22 doubles, 27 bombs, 78 ribs, struck out 123 times to about a two. Um, uh, no, I'm sorry, walked 70 to 123, which isn't bad. Batted about a 260. Like that's kind of the range you're going to expect from him. At 260, I think more than now that he's in the bigs, probably like that 245 to 255 range. I think that's where we kind of see a little bit of a decrease in the average just because he's already having trouble adjusting to the big league pitching. You know, that's just how I'm looking at Francisco Alvarez at the moment. But right now I say you scoop him up and we'll be talking about him for years to come. This year isn't his breakout year, but he's a ride the wave at the position on and off throughout this whole year. And that's what I expect for Francisco Alvarez. Yeah, Matt, that's a strong take there on Alvarez. You know, let's not forget he's only 21 years old. He has the prospect pedigree. I believe he was the number one prospect in all of baseball coming into the season. So let's not get too much prospect fatigue on Alvarez here. He's 50% owned on Yahoo. You know, he's been hitting like second in that lineup his last four games. So that's a great spot to be hitting in that Mets lineup. I think you go out there, you pick up Alvarez, especially if you have a catcher that's struggling. And you ride the wave. There's going to be ups and downs because he's a young buck. Like I said, 21 years old for Francisco Alvarez. But it seems like he's starting to adjust back, you know, to that big league pitching. And I think he's somebody that's definitely a must add heading into this week. But let's keep things pushing over here. Let's talk about somebody that that kind of I didn't really expect to have the year he's having. And I don't think many people did. Uh, it's Orlando Arcia. You know, uh, for the Braves, we all were pushing Von Grissom, Von Grissom, Von Grissom. 
who, you know, uh, didn't really get a super fair shake. You know, he was back up for a little bit, you know, kind of was you know, struggling in the power department, but he was hitting for average a bit. But you know what? Orlando Arcia has, you know, been given the job, and he kind of took it and run with it. This year, Arcia in 43 games has 151 at-bats, 22 runs, 8 doubles, 5 homers, 19 RBIs. Didn't Hasn't stolen any bases yet, 318 batting average. Do I think Arcia can keep it up for the whole year? Probably not. But you know what? If you want some, you know, cheap exposure to that Braves lineup, which has been pretty strong of late, I think you go out there and you give Arcia the shot. On Yahoo, he's eligible at second, short, and outfield. He's 49% owned. So not really too much else to say about Arcia. You know, 28 years old, you know, kind of, you know, at that make or break point in his career. He has never really shown too much up until this point. So like I said, I, I'm not relying on him at this point. But, you know, if you lost somebody like Jazz or, you know, uh, struggling at second base, shortstop or outfield, you can give Arcia the chance. Not the best guy we're talking about today. Not the worst guy we're talking about today. Yeah, and Dom, do you by any chance have his um, owner's percentage? Because uh, I don't at the moment. Yeah, 49% um, on. 49%. So, so he's still out yeah, there. 49%. And he's definitely worth it. Um, if you haven't heard of the brand of the uh, Swiss Army Knife Arceus, um, you know, that's a really good brand for pick up a Swiss Army knife. You can, you know, hit some second base, some third base, some catcher, whatever you want. You know, Arcia just does it all except for catching. I'm just lying. But anyway, Arcia, great pickup this week. Great take, Dom. All right, let's move on here. Let's talk about Mr. Nolan Jones. Nolan Jones, the Colorado Rockies. If you haven't heard of the kid right now, he's hot. I mean, quite honestly, this last week was pretty impressive. Three runs. Two bombs, five ribs, four stolen bases to boot, batting 400. Like, that's a solid week. Like, like yo, like, I kill for that kind of week from somebody. And he's doing it off the waivers, 50% owned right now. So he's still out there in half the league. So if he's available, go scoop him up. And here's a bonus, too. Like, and, you know, this is one of the replacements. Vinny P just hit the IL. So, you know, he isn't a bad replacement for Vinny yeah. P on the short term, especially with the Colorado Rockies upside. So, you know, definitely take a look at Nolan Jones. Like, he's definitely nobody to snuff at. I mean, he's batting about on the on the season 348. He's only been uh, he's only had 46 at bats. So, like, really don't know too much about this kid other than the fact that he just got the call and he's doing his thing so far translating. So, like, yo, Nolan Jones, let's see what's up. Let's see what he can do. Right now, ride that wave, and maybe he has a play until Vinny P gets back. Yeah, guys, if, if you watched the episode where we did the crossover with Locked on Rockies, we talked about Nolan Jones for a little bit there. And somebody I'm really excited about, he's a big boy, 6'4", 195. He's got to put a little bit more weight on, a little bit more muscle on him. But, man, oh, man, you know, dude, at 6'4", you're going to generate some, you know, power, even if he doesn't have, like, that that full, full-blown man body yet. But Nolan Jones, you know, he, he had great for average in the minors this year. He's hitting for great average so far, you know, as he's gotten the promotion. The power is legit. He's got a little speed to go along with it. Matt, I love the take that if you lost Vinny P, Nolan Jones is the perfect pickup. Uh, 50% owned on Yahoo. It looks like they're away from Coors next week, the Rockies, but, you know, they'll be back there sooner than later, and I think Nolan Jones will be able to perform outside of Coors as well. He's been hitting a little bit lower in the lineup, but I think there's potential for him to move up with no Chris Bryant, no C.J. Crone. If Jones keeps hitting like this, he could see himself hitting third, fourth, or fifth sooner than later. I think Nolan Jones is definitely, definitely, definitely somebody that you want to take the shot on. And before we keep going here, as we know, we got a bunch of great names for you to talk about. We got a Twins prospect we've kind of been talking about here and there. We got the the new catcher for the San Diego Padres. And we got a bunch of great pitchers, including a closer few coming up next. But guys, for a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right and the accessories too. Head, for e- head to eBay Motors with the eBay Guaranteed Fit. You can be sure every part you need fits just right the first time around. Just add your ride to my garage and look for the green check to know the part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop on eBay Motors. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. Eligible items only. Exclusions do apply. And as always, we want to thank our everydayers and new listeners for making Locked On Fantasy Baseball your first listen each and every day. Be sure to look out, be on the lookout for a new episode tomorrow when we give you the best trade for and away players. 
And guys, real quick, we're almost at 2,000 subscribers on YouTube, and we couldn't have done it without you. If you enjoy the show and want to help us out, please share our podcast with a few friends who also love fantasy baseball or just baseball in general. We'd be truly grateful for your support on this journey to 2,000 subscribers. But Matt, as always, you know, that's a, it's a lot of talking for me. Why don't you uh, grab this next guy? All right, cool. I'm surprised you don't want to talk about him, but I'm going to take the opportunity to. That's Mr. Eduardo. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get my take. I'll get my take. All right, do it. Yes, Go for uh, it. Edward, Edward, Edward Julian. Ed, Edward. All right, I'll take it. I'll take it. Why not? I'll hop in here. Um, so Edward Julian kind of been up and down with the Twins this year. You know, they haven't really given him a fair shake, but he was, uh, you know, he wasn't a highly touted prospect. But if you were in the world of prospects, you had heard his name coming into the year. And, you know, he does play. He has um, eligibility at second base, which is a tough position. You know, as uh, I was saying, you know, with um, um, Arcia, you know, Julian is another guy that could just hop in and fill in. He's been back for the last couple of games, and so far he is three for seven with um, two runs and a steal. Kind of what he does. He's got a little bit of power. He's got a little bit of speed. They hit him lead off, and, you know, he's a lead off and second. They kind of been moving him around between those two spots, which is a great spot to hit in in any lineup. So I think we kind of just see what happens here with Julian. You know, he's still pretty young at, you know, 24 years old, you know, in his first year in the bigs, kind of getting his first taste of big leagues pitching. And as, you know, I always say my theory is we were spoiled with Acuna and Tatis and Soto over the, you know, past few years uh, coming up and just translating right away. But, you know, let's not forget the Julios and the Bobby Witts and the Vinny P's that all came up and struggled a bit. And then they finally turned it on. And even Mike Trout. Mike Trout was another guy. He didn't click right away. You know, it took him a little bit. Julian has a good track record in the minors. Let's talk about that 2022, 113 games, 400 at-bats, 77 runs, 19 doubles, three triples, 17 bombs, 67 RBIs, 19 steals, and he hit 300. The upside is there. He's always been a good average guy in the minors. He's got a little bit of pop, a little bit of speed. I think if the Twins give him the fair shake out there, he could be worth the add. Right now, Julian is only... 3% 3% owned, you can get him in pretty much every league. You know, look in those deeper leagues, those AL onlys, 15 mans, definitely give him a shot. Yeah, I like Julian a lot. I mean, my guy hasn't even hit his man body yet at six foot and 195 uh, pounds. Like, you know, it, quite honestly, like I expect, I expect a six foot man in, in baseball to be at least a 220, 210 range. So another like 10 to 15 pounds on this kid, and he can bring that 19, uh, 17 home run season and 18 home run season in the minors bring it to the bigs and get a 25 to 30 home run season. I think Julian has upside. I'm not saying he's going to hit. That's a whole nother animal, but he has the upside to have the power bat. So I do like what he can do, especially with that second base eligibility. Edward Julian is definitely something you need to consider adding. I wouldn't say a 100% must add, but a consider now. Great take Dom. Let me move on here. I just wanted to throw that in there. Let's talk about Mr. Gary Sanchez. We've talked about him. I think what Dom like three weeks in a row now. You know, Gary Sanchez is somebody that's kind of under-owned at 31% uh, owned. Well, I know the last couple of times. Yeah, like he's 31% owned, and catcher is really hard to come by. I don't understand why he's so literally owned. I understand the name. I don't really feel comfortable or great about picking him up either. Don't get me wrong, but Gary, Gary Sanchez is getting the job done through two weeks, right? So through two weeks, he has eight, bom- um, eight runs, five bombs, 12 ribs, and batting 282. So... Last week, too, like, let's let's really break this down. I had the eight runs through two weeks. He had four runs last week, so that's four and four. He had three bombs this uh, this past week. He has, he has five in total, so that's two bombs last week. He had eight runs, this uh, RBIs this week, right? So that's four ribs last week. So he was four, two, and four, and batting anywhere from the range of, like, 282 to really, like, 300. Like, that's good production last week. Figures it out this week as well. Carries it over. Gary Sanchez is just hot. Like this isn't like a, you know, run. And then like, this is your solution for the rest of the season. Absolutely freaking not. But in a two catcher league or just somebody that has like a really crappy catcher out there, Gary Sanchez, at least the plug and play while he's performing and your catcher is doing what Gary Sanchez normally will do. So like, you know, fix that, add them, drop what you currently have, move up. And then when he starts dying off, pick somebody else up. I mean, Anything to come out of the catcher position is something to, of worth note and something of worth picking up. And he also follows my rule of the batting average. Batting average off the waiver wire is, is, is a must add. So he's hitting all the categories, catcher, batting average, and producing home runs and ribs off the, bat, off the waiver wire. Can't beat this right now. Gary Sanchez, I feel, is a must add if you have a struggling catcher. 
I feel like you kind of waffled there, man. I'm gonna be honest with you. I feel like you started off with saying that, oh, I don't, I don't believe in him, and then you're like, no, I totally believe in him. But I'm, I'm on the side where I, I fully, fully, fully believe in Gary Sanchez at this point. I look at that 2019 season with the Yankees, and I think he can put up very similar numbers to that this year. In 2019, Gary Sanchez had 106 games played, 396 at bats, 62 runs, 12 doubles. 34 home runs, 77 RBIs, and he had 232. I think he could be a 30 home run guy. And and then San Diego, they're hitting him fourth. They're hitting Gary Sanchez is hitting fourth in the lineup with Soto, Tatis, mm. uh, you know Machado. It's just that that uh, you know it was Bogarts when Bogarts is you know fully back and healthy. That is some lineup to be hitting right in the middle of. You know the runs may not be great. The runs might not be a 62, but if you can get 50 runs from Gary Sanchez, 30 plus bombs. I think, you know, 70, 80 RBIs is definitely reasonable in a 230 batting average. Gary Sanchez, top 10 catcher the rest of the way, in my opinion. I think he should be owned in 70, 80 percent of leagues. That's my take on Gary Sanchez. I hear you, dude. And you know what? Like when you say I waffled, like I get it. Like I gave like the upside of what this kid could do. But the way I look at it is I don't see yeah. Gary. I don't see Gary Sanchez doing it for long term. Right. It's all about the short term play right now. And that's pretty much what my whole. My whole rant take was was like, yo, like he's hot right now. He's performing. Catchers aren't performing that we drafted. Might as well scoop up Gary Sanchez while he's doing it and while he's hot. And then when he does flop, it's inevitable personally. And even though he's in that great Padres lineup, I don't foresee him really doing it long term. It's just he didn't do it in the Yankees lineup. It doesn't confirm that he's going to. It kind of confirms the fact that he won't do it in the Padres lineup. It's just how I look at it. But. Short term, let's get it rocking and rolling and scoop them up. Yeah, I mean, I I think if he's healthy, he's going to – I don't know. Maybe it's the Yankee fan of me. Maybe it's it the is. Yankee fan of me rooting for Gary Sanchez again. You know, it, it's good. I'm glad to see him raking and doing his thing. And, you know, maybe I'm living vicariously through the Padres fan because I always wanted Gary to, you know, keep it going in the Yankees uniform. But I, I think the upside's there as long as he's healthy. He's been injury prone before, so don't get me wrong. If he's hurt, you know, he can get hurt at any moment. A lot of guys can get hurt at any moment, though. But I think if he stays healthy, I think he's found a home there. I think his boys, you know, he, I've you know, heard he's close with Tatis and them and Machado and the rest of them. And I, I, I think he can keep it going. I know, like I said, maybe it's just the Yankee fan in me. But I think I think if you need a catcher right now, I, I would take – um, ooh, Gary Sanchez or Francisco Alvarez. That's super close for me. That's I'm super taking close. Alvarez. Um, I think, yeah, in my opinion, I think it's preference. I think I don't, I don't really have a preference. I would kind of just take if one's available and the other one's not. Kind of just, I don't know. I'm, I'm waffling right now to be honest with you. I don't know who I would take out of the two of them. I think it's a lot closer than people would think. Just for this year, long term, Alvarez, of course. This year, I don't know, man. I like Gary Sanchez. Maybe not over Alvarez, but it's close. But let's move on. Let me, let me not sit here and rant about my boy Gary Sanchez all day. Let's move on. Get into the pitchers here. You know, let's talk about Kenta Maeda. And, you know, I feel like we've talked about Kenta Maeda before. I want to talk about a flanges guy, you know, injury-prone guy. Kenta Maeda fits the bill perfectly. But you know what? He's on his way back. He's only 16% owned. If you're in a deeper league where, you know, pitching is getting eaten up and, you know, it's starting to look like that in a lot of my leagues, Kenta Maeda is only 16% owned. If, you know, he's he, in his last outing, he threw four scoreless innings, um, you know, at AAA on Saturday. Five strikeouts, only allowed three hits. He's had three rehab starts down there. You know, this one was his best. He's doing pretty good down there. It could be that, you know, his next start could come with the Twins against Detroit next week. That would be fantastic. You know, nice little soft, uh, you know, opening spot, making his way back, Kenta Maeda. And, you know, he, he had, uh, you know, he wasn't great so far this year, but we all know Kenta Maeda's upside. You know, he's had some good years in the past. Like I said, maybe not my favorite guy that we're going to talk about today, but, you know, he's had, you know, good years in the past. He's a, uh, you know, Decent strikeout guy. He can manufacture some wins. That you know, decent Twins team. I think uh, my eight is worth the chance. Deeper leagues, you know, only sixteen percent owned. Give him a shot. Yeah, absolutely. I love my in terms of what he can bring to the table. I think that everything you said, I one hundred percent agree. Uh, one thing I just will add is that my just started off the season hot and then kind of flopped until he was hurt. So maybe this will bring yeah. it back and see that hot start that that we saw maybe he was just dealing with the injury longer than we thought but let's move on here all right up next we have uh a pitcher from pittsburgh which you know we didn't think we were going to talk about any more pitch uh pittsburgh players and about two or three you know relievers to you know help you get those saves and help you manufacture a win in that category this week 
All right, and we're back. Thank you so much. Sorry for that terrible tease, but it is what it is. Um, <laughs> you know, my bad. But let's talk about talk about somebody, Pittsburgh Pirate, just like I talked about, I uh, just mentioned in the tease, Johan Oviedo. Right, I got that right. I read it right off of you know Perfect. baseball reference. So uh, Johan <laughs> has been interesting, right? So he started off the year like lights on fire, right? Like he was just completely hot, and then he kind of fell off, absolutely obliterated what his ERA was on the year because he went from like I think like a sub three to like a now he's at a four sixteen, and you know Johan actually had like four good starts where like yo like who is this kid? Like he was really legit and then boom, got lit up a whole bunch of starts, but it seems like he's kind of returned back to form. He's not like, you know, a sub two pitcher anymore, but like, yo, he's killing it. Like this last start against the Mets, which was on the 10th, which was Saturday. He had five K's two eight four ERA and a 0.95 whip. That's really nice. Then against Oakland, he had five K's a two five seven ERA with a zero eight six whip. And then, Against San Francisco at San Francisco, he had again five Ks, a two hundred eight ERA, and a one five ERA. That whip is a whip. I'm sorry, the whip is a little high, but I mean, hey, sometimes it happens. Johan is a decent start, and right now, how I'm looking at it is maybe uh, he has figured it out what he was doing in the beginning. It looked like the league adjusted. He has now adjusted. So right now, I'm going to ride the wave of hey, he has adjusted back, and let's see what what Johan can do. And then yeah, I wouldn't say he's 100% matchup proof, but I'm going to say I'm going to probably start him moving forward about 65% of the time. You know, unless there's some atrocious matchup, I will sit him. Other than that, I'm probably going to roll him out moving forward. So honestly, he's my number one pitching pitching waiver wire ad right now. And that's Johan. I, I, let me read it again so I don't mess this up. Oviedo. Oviedo. So... Johan Oviedo, I say he is a must add in the pitching, especially with nothing out there. Yeah, the the pitching, you know, keeps coming off the waiver wire, as I mentioned with Maeda. Like, you know, these guys get keep, keep getting scooped up, you know, very, very quickly. And Oviedo's all right. He's not he's not blowing anybody away by any means, but he's a decent pickup right now. As Matt mentioned, he's been having his ups and downs this year when Pittsburgh, you know, was one of the best teams in baseball. He was leading the charge. Now that they've slowed down, you know, kind of, you know, he's part of the reason he had some really bad outings. But, you know, numbers on the year aren't, aren't atrocious. The whip's a little bit high. He's never really been a great control pitcher throughout his career. So that's to be expected. But you know what? If you want somebody, you know, that the, can suppress runs a bit, his last three starts, he's been a great job at that over his last three starts. 34 innings, 30 strikeouts. He has one win, 2-6-2 ERA, 1-2-2 whip. So as I mentioned, whip's a little high for Oviedo. You know, very good at suppressing runs. Strikeouts right under that K per nine. Matt mentioned he gets the Cubs up next week, 18% owned on Yahoo. Give him a chance. I mean, out of everyone we're talking about today, I probably would agree with Matt. He might be my number one, maybe 1A. We got a couple of guys coming up that I think are interesting as well. But give uh, young Oviedo the shot. Once again, this kid's only 25 years old. So he's still learning, you know, how to pitch in the big leagues and all that stuff. So I think he's definitely worth an ad for now. Let's move on to, uh, you know, somewhat saddening situation, but I guess it creates an opportunity for us fantasy baseball owners. Uh, let's talk about Kendall Graveman. Um, unfortunately, Liam Hendricks back to the IL. You know, I believe it was an arm issue, so you never want to hear that. But you know what? I'm sure Kendall Graveman was dropped in a lot of leagues, so if he was dropped in your league, uh, definitely want to give Graveman the shot. I heard Hendricks is out at least two weeks, um, if not even longer than that. So, you know, we'll kind of see where this thing goes. And hopefully – Hopefully Hendricks can get better, man. You know, I had him in one of my leagues, and, you know, I kind of just uh, – I had too many IL guys at this point. I know a lot of guys getting hurt, so I kind of just gave him the drop. And, you know, if you have the room on your IL, by all means, keep Liam Hendricks. I just didn't have it. And, you know, let's talk about Kendall Graven, though. He's having a good year so far. 2-2 DRA. He's pitched in 28 games, 27 innings, 26 strikeouts, and a 0-8-6 whip. So he's been solid. And he also has six saves. So we know that the White Sox are going to turn right back to Graveman and, you know, they're going to give him a shot. Graveman's only 33% owned. And, you know, if he was dropped in your league, I think he's a must add as far as, you know, closers go. If you're missing out on a closer, give Graveman a shot. Not really too much else I can say is that over the last three years, he's kind of has pretty solid track record closing. So I definitely think you want to give Kendall Graveman a shot. Oh, absolutely. I love Graveman. I honestly, before – you know, Liam was going to make his back. I honestly didn't even think he was going to play this year. So I'm not surprised by the injury. I think this is kind of our future with 
Liam Hendricks for this this year at least. You know, it's hard to come back from doing all the chemos and treatments yeah. and things, and thank God he's okay. But it's hard to just snap on back. There's a reason why Carlos Carrasco took a year off after being diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. So I think Kendall Graveman actually has a little bit longer um, play than now. You know, like Hendricks will kick, will will figure it out and come back healthy. And then I foresee it happening very quickly. So keep your eye on Kendall Graveman all year. Because every time Hendricks goes down, Graveman's going to have the job. But anyway, let's move on here. Let's talk about uh, Mr. Garrett Whitlock. Um, You know... It's interesting. My guy, I figured, was a middle relief guy. Had a couple save opportunities last year, and now he's starting to get the the, the starts here. And he's an interesting, interesting arm here. I do like Whitlock. I like what he brings to the table. His last start was pretty nice against the Yankees of all. And I'm not being sour, and I'm not giving him, you know, he lit up the Yankees kind of hype either. But he did go six innings deep, got six Ks, got the W, you know, put the one four two ERA up against us, and had a one two six WHIP. Like I like those numbers. I like what Whitlock did. You know, now let's go to the other side and they're like, okay, he got lit up against Tampa and had a seven seven one ERA. Like I get it, but like Whitlock has has this, has the potential to, you know, be a decent starter. And with pitching the way it is, and with Chris Sale going down, you know. Whitlock could be an option for you, whether he's getting the save opportunity because they just need to get somebody that's going to be consistent, or if they're rolling him out as a starter, I think Whitlock is a fair add and can see what he can do for you moving forward. I don't know how long his starting potential is going to be out there, but while it is, I kind of want to see where that journey takes me, and that's Garrett Whitlock. Yeah, I'm I'm actually I was a huge Garrett Whitlock guy last year as they were transitioning Whitlock to be a starter last year. He made nine starts last year out of the 31 games he pitched. He had a 3.45 ERA, he had 78 innings, 82 strikeouts and a 102 whip. He has a great track record in the minors, you know, but he's always kind of been is this guy going to be a starter? Is he going to be a reliever? You know, as Matt mentioned, he even got six saves last year and two saves the year before. So, but I'll say this with, you know, Chris Sale likely out, you know, he could, Chris Sale could be out the rest of the year. It's a shoulder problem. You know, they, they, they're not really giving a crazy amount of information on it, but they transitioned Chris Sale to the 60 day IL. So he's out at least until August 1st. And that sounds optimistic to me. Yeah, go ahead, brother. No, no, I just said that's pretty quickly. Oh, okay. My fault. My thought. I thought you were trying to hop in there. That's my fault. But yeah, so, you know, Chris Sale being transitioned to the 60 day IL, you know, I mean, it's, it's not looking good. They said he's not going to throw for at least five weeks. So, I mean, I think Garrett Whitlock's going to step in. They're going to let him, you know, start. Uh, as Matt mentioned, that last start looks good against the Yankees. He's only 23% owned on Yahoo. Once again, Garrett Whitlock. And he starts against Colorado next week at, you know, in Boston. So it looks pretty good. You know, Colorado doesn't really have a lot of guys besides Nolan Jones and Tovar and not really much going on there. I think you pick up Garrett Whitlock and you kind of, you know, that in that pitch and dish type of situation, like, all right, if he pitches good against Colorado, maybe I'll hold him. If he pitches bad against Colorado, you just cut bait and you move on to the next guy. But let's let's move on to our last guy here, you know, with a little transition here. Let's talk about Kyle Hendricks. Oh, man, my boy Kyle Hendricks, dude. I remember when Kyle Hendricks was out there winning the Cy Young, and, you know, he's kind of hasn't been the same guy, you know, since since then pretty much. You know, I think he had one or two years after that where he was serviceable. But pretty much since then, Kyle Hendricks really hasn't been that guy. But you know what? Coming off the injury, Kyle Hendricks is looking pretty pretty solid so far this year. Um, On the year through, I believe it's four starts. Let, let me just confirm that. Yeah, through four starts. So far in the year, Kyle Hendricks, 309 ERA, 107 whip, 23 innings, 15 strikeouts, looking like vintage Kyle Hendricks. Um, His last start was against San Fran at San Fran, so, you know, it's kind of an easy one. But still, to go eight innings, get the win, three strikeouts, no earned with a 025 whip. Kind of reminds me of those vintage Kyle Hendricks days. He's 9% owned. That needs to be closer to 50% owned, especially in those deeper leagues, you know, those NL onlys. Uh, he does get Baltimore next week, so he gets a little bit of a test. But you know what? He passed the test against San Diego. He pa- he passed the test against Tampa Bay. So I think Kyle Hendricks, 
I don't want to say he's my favorite because he's getting pretty old, but he's kind of up there. He's kind of up there because if Kyle Hendricks can, you know, turn back the clock and kind of, you know, be at least 75% of the pitcher that he used to be, there's a lot of, lot of upside there. He was never a strikeout guy. He never blew you away with his fastball or anything like that. He was always a finesse kind of pitcher. So, you know, Kyle Hendricks with a career 3-4-5 ERA, you know, kind of says something with a career 1-1-4 whip, kind of says something. The Cubs have been at least serviceable this year so he can get you some wins. The only category he's really not going to help you out in is, you know, that strikeout department. But, hey, Kyle Hendricks, definitely, definitely worth an ad. 9% owned on Yahoo. Uh, pick him up. Pick Kyle Hendricks up. Yeah. Um, I see you're uh, drooling over your guilty pleasure over here, which is Kyle Hendricks. Um, you know. Love Kyle Hendricks. I know you do. It's Dom's guilty pre- pleasure, right? Like So, like, everybody likes to sneak a little chocolate off and from their husband or wife. And Dom likes to just go sneak off and take a look at Kyle Hendricks stats for the last decade. Um, that's just what Dom Real does. Real quick, let me let me just correct myself. He actually did he didn't he didn't he did not win the Cy Young. He did not win the Cy Young last, that year. He came in third. He came in third in the Cy Young race. I, I I need to correct myself before I hear it in the YouTube comments. He did not win the Cy Young. I thought he did. It's I apologize. Good. It's all good, Dom. Just don't let it happen again. Um, but anyway, so yeah. gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, you know, the guy that makes all the mistakes on the show telling you don't let it happen again but yeah it's great anyway kyle hendricks <laughs> i love kyle hendricks gotcha. like here's the here's the deal while he's performing kyle hendricks can have like a month of genius the thing is just be careful like he's not a long-term solution but right now like yo he's just a ride the wave because one he has the pedigree like dom talked about and two pitching is absolutely utterly garbage on the waiver wire so kyle hendricks any shot at the at, at light just shining down on you to pick up somebody off the waivers that's actually pitching good yeah scoop up kyle hendricks like like dom said now will it last all season i doubt it dom scenes on the other hand it's really just a matter of ride the wave until uh, it happens I, you, though. I don't know yeah, like like legit, like this is one of those things where I'm gonna ride Kyle Hendricks until the Titanic hits the iceberg. So like once it happens, the ship starts sinking, then you jump sail, you jump bait, you jump ship. But Kyle Hendricks right now, while he's performing and while he has that pedigree of being successful in the MLB, you gotta ride the wave while it is. Now, Dom, I'm done. I hope I didn't, you know, go too far with your boy. But uh take it away, sir. No, you're you no, know, you're on point. You're on point. I'm just going to agree with the fact that at 33 years old, I don't know how much Hendricks has left in the tank, but it's good to see him pitching like his old self again. So, you know, what? I think, like you said, it's kind of juice the orange, get everything you can out of him. And you know what? Maybe he does, you know, take you to the glory land, uh, you know, get you one of those locked on championships. Maybe not. We'll see how it goes. But guys, that is all for today. Please be sure to like, subscribe, comment, rate, and review. Check out our website if you already have it. And thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Baseball your first listen each and every day. Day. We truly appreciate our everydayers and new listeners. Make sure you lock on for a new episode tomorrow when we talk about the best must trade for and away players. But until then, see peace. You.